So welcome back to a another session here where we're practicing a few tutorial questions and our focus is still accounting and the business environment. Um, at this point, I'll encourage you if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Um, if you like this video, click that like button. If you have any extra questions, you may submit it in the comments or you can send us an email or a DM on Instagram. So let us continue. So last week, we looked at really analyzing different transactions that may happen in the business fair or in conducting your business or in carrying out a service to anyone. This week, we'll be looking at the same thing, but in a different way. But before we go any further, I just want to reiterate, what do we know for accounting equation, which is very fundamental, because any, well, any transaction really, or all transactions affect our accounting equation in one way or the other. So our accounting equation states, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. And we can dissect that and we know what the definition for each is and what are different examples of each. So let's continue. What is required? We're describing each transactions. So remember last week, we got a listing of transactions or business activities, and we were supposed to analyze how it affects the accounting equation. And with that, we wrote out the accounting equation and then we dissected a little further, giving examples of assets, giving examples of liabilities and owner's equity and what might be affected. This week, we have that part of it. We have the details, but what we're supposed to be doing is analyzing or describing the transaction. So looking at each analyzed transaction or each analyzed detail and making up a transaction for it. And that is the beauty. Like you can say whatever you want, but it just has to fit this transaction. So for number one, well, what we're seeing here, we're seeing and we can denote um, additions and subtractions where money is going out by a transaction, money is coming in when there is a plus sign, an addition sign. So what we have, we have cash, which is an asset. We have receivables, also an asset. Equipment, an asset. Then, and if you can note here, cash plus accounts receivable plus equipment, those are our assets. Equal or liability, accounts payable, and or owner's equity. So here again, you are seeing the accounting equation. Assets equal liability plus owner's equity. So let's get into it. Number one, an increase of $25,000 cash because we're seeing the plus sign and also an increase in owner's equity or owner's capital of 25. Hmm. What can we say is happening here? Cash is increasing, owner's equity is increasing. Here we can say the owner has invested $25,000 cash in his business. So that's describing this transaction here. So number one, check the owner invested $25,000 cash in his business. Let's move on to number two, all right? We're seeing here where accounts receivable is increasing and owner's equity is increasing. So accounts receivable, we know that, okay, we might have sold something on credit, right? So we sold someone something, we performed a service if they are a service organization, but we didn't get paid for it. Hence why accounts receivable, we are gonna be getting paid in the future. So we have that part of it. So we go over to the next part where it's in capital owner's equity. And last week we spoke, we said that owner's equity 
It involves a number of things. It involves revenues, it involves expenses, it involves owners' investments and injections in the business and also our withdrawals. So based on all of those, which one of those would fit this scenario? It couldn't be expense because we have accounts receivable as a right withdrawals. No, it's not the owner putting in money to be receivable in the future. So the best option would have been revenue. So we performed a service for someone or we sold them something. So what we were hired to do, what we were employed to do, that was done, that service was done or that good was delivered. So that revenue is now earned. However, we haven't received cash as yet. And that is why the receivables is now into play. We're going to get this amount of money, this $2,400, in the future. So in describing this situation, you could say whatever the name of your business is, Grand Majors Limited performed services for XX Limited, right? $2,400 was the cost, which is to be received at a later date. And that is describing the transaction. All right, so let's look at number three. We're seeing where equipment, another asset, is increasing. And our accounts payable, which is a liability, is also increasing. So here we can say, okay, equipment is increasing. So we would have added to our equipment, we would have purchased additional equipment, right? And there, so on the same side or on the same, at the same time, our accounts payable is increasing. So we acquired equipment. How did we pay for it? It's not cash. It's not by our physical funds that we have in the business. Otherwise, our cash would have been reducing, but it's not. So it would have mean that we acquired these equipment on credit and hence why the accounts payable to be paid in the future. So in describing this transaction, we would say Grand Majors, my company, whatever you want to name yours, that's fine acquired equipment on credit for $10,000. So that would be the description for this transaction. So let's look at number four. We're seeing where cash is increasing. So we got some money, we got some payment and our accounts receivable is decreasing, right? What? would be happening here. This would, if our accounts receivable is reducing, would mean that whoever owes us is paying us, right? So someone, a customer, or it could be the same customer in number two, where you perform some work, but you they're gonna pay you at Salisa date. So it could be that same customer who once owed you, who is now taking their time to clear their debt to you. So in describing this transaction, you could say a customer who owed the business $150 has paid us $150 in cash. And that would be describing this transaction. The next one, number five, we're seeing more cash is reducing by $400, right? And our equipment is increasing by 400. So this would mean that we've acquired some equipment, right? We've acquired some equipment. How have we acquired it? By cash, because our cash is reducing. So in describing this transaction, we're saying grand majors acquired equipment valued at $400 to which it paid for using cash. You don't have to put all these words, but the essence is that you acquired equipment and you paid for it using cash, right? So that's the description for this transaction. Let's go to question six. We're seeing where cash is being reduced by $8,000, so cash is leaving. 
So you're paying for something. So right now you can say, okay, Grand Major is paid $800 cash, but we have to say the other side. So the next side to it is our accounts payable reducing by 800. What is our accounts payable? Our accounts payable are those person or this person that you owed, right? You took something from them and you're gonna pay them. You said you are gonna pay them in the future, right? At that get go, when you took it and said you were gonna pay for it in the future, your accounts payable increased, right? But now you are paying them. So it's decreasing. So to fully describe this transaction, Grand Majors paid an outstanding accounts payable using cash of $8,000. And that is describing this transaction. All right, let's look at number seven. Cash is increasing by $900. And at the same time, owner's equity or capital is also increasing by $900. This we can say is similar, right? Similar to the first transaction where we could say the owner injected capital again in the business, but could it also be revenue that you earned, right? So in this case, you would have sold a good or performed a service for $900. That's revenue earned because you, you did it, what you were hired to do, what you were employed to do, you carried out that activity. But in this case, you received cash for it. What would have been the transaction? One, your revenue and that senior owner's equity section of the equation, that would increase, but also your cash would increase because now you have received a payment for the service that you've provided or the good that you've provided for these persons. So in this case, it could be either, however you choose to describe it would have been correct and the same could have been for question one, right? So you're just describing it how you see fit, but it has to make sense in regards to the equation. And we're looking at the last one, number eight, where cash is being reduced by $2,000, right? And our owner's equity is being reduced by $2,000. Hmm. Cash is being reduced, so you're taking out. You're taking out of the business. What is in owner's equity that signifies that, okay, I'm taking out, so what would this be affecting? It's not revenue, right? No, it cannot be investments because when the owner invests, it's adding. So it could be, okay, this is a withdrawal. This is a drawing. So this is the owner taking out cash for personal use. When the owner does that, our cash will inevitably decrease and our equity or capital or claim or interest to these assets will also decrease. So here we could say the owner, Grand Majors, withdrew $2,000 cash from the business for personal use, right? So this is the end of this section of this question that we'll be doing. If you have any questions, post it in our comment section. Like this video if you understood anything from it. Share it with someone who might be doing this course or will be doing it in the future and let us know your thoughts. Remember to share, like, and subscribe to help us out with our algorithm. So we'll see you next time with another video.